Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease. Today we are going to solve count pairs with given sum. So we are given an array of n integers and an integer k. We have to find the number of pairs of element in the array whose sum is equal to k. So if k is the required sum and we are given this array, we have to find how many pairs exist in this array whose sum is equal to the given sum which is 6. So as we can see in this, 1 plus 5, this 1 and 5 is adding up to 6 which is one pair and another pair exists which is 5 and 1. So we have in total two pairs. If you see the second example, however, there are four ones and the output is six. Means it is trying to say there are six pairs, which is adding up to k equal to two. The sum is two. One plus one we know is two. Now, if you see the first one can pair up with the second one, it is one pair. The first one can also pair up with the third one and the first one can pair up with the fourth one. So now we have got three pairs. If you see the second one, the second one has already paired with the first. So the second one can now pair with the third one and the fourth one. So now 3 plus 2, we have 5 pairs. Coming to the third one, this one, it can pair with the last one because it has already paired with the initial two ones. So 5 plus 1 is 6, that's why the output is 6. Uh, we are going to see it in the dry run, however, um, how can we actually arrive at this? So this question seems to be a flavor of the two sum question. If you guys have not watched it, I am going to link it up above. In that, we were supposed to find out a single pair, which is going to give us a sum equal to k. But in this case, we don't have to find a pair. We have to find how many multiple pairs exist in this array. There will be more than one pair. So in this question, however, we have to find how many pairs exist whose sum is equal to k. There won't be necessarily one pair only. Okay. Uh, the time complexity is linear. The space is we are supposed, uh, we are allowed to use additional space also, which is good. And these are the companies in which it has been asked earlier. Okay, so with that, let's try to see how can we solve this question. Before that, if you guys are enjoying this content, please hit the like button so that this can reach as many people who can draw benefit out of these videos. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon also to get the notifications on further content like this. Thank you. So let's come back to the approach. So as we can see that we are supposed to... Uh, have the linear complexity, time complexity, and we are allowed to use additional space also. In case of two sum, we used hashing technique. We used a hash set uh, to keep track of the elements. And what we were doing in that is, uh, we were saying that if the sum minus the current element, if this, this thing, sum minus whatever this value is, if this exists in the set, means we have found another corresponding element of our pair. And then we used to break it and we used to return that pair, uh, whatever the pair is coming as. Okay. We are going to have, we are going to draw similar, uh, we are going to draw similar logic out of that in this, but we are not going to use hash set. We would need hash map because we have to return the pairs. So we would return, we would need to keep track of the count of the occurrences also. So we need the element as well as the count of the occurrences. That's why we are going to use a hash map. So has, hash map, as we know, is a key value store. We have a key and we have a value store, the corresponding value store for the key. So here what we will do is, we will also do this something similar. We'll check if this sum minus this error of i, if this exists in the hash map. Means if it is exist in the hash map as in if the key exists in this, if this key exists, then we will do count equal to count plus whatever the value is for that element. Okay. Uh, why we are doing this? Let's try to understand this. Suppose at first, if I consider this array, this is the element 1. And I will say 6 minus 1, which is 5, is not existing in the hash map. If it is not existing, anyway, we have to add to hash map and update the count to whatever the existing count is that plus one okay so currently the count uh, for this element one will be zero and zero plus one will be one so this one it will be stored something like this one and the mapping will be one and the mapping will be one what will be the count this count variable is nothing but what we have to return finally so this count will be zero one and one so this is where we are at now now comes five 5. So 6 minus 5 is 1, but 1 is already existing in our hash map. Since it is already there in our hash map, so what we have to do is we have to increment the count. We have to increment the count by what? We have to increment the count 
by whatever the previous count it is holding that plus the value of the element. What this means? This element is nothing but this 1. So, 1 is having a value of 1 and 1 plus 0 it will be 1. So, this 0 will now change to 1. So, our currently now our count will be 1. Okay, so, I will remove this. So, it will be 1. And after that, we are going to add another entry into the hash map and we will add it for the new element that we have encountered. So, we have added 5 and then the value will be 1 because 5 has occurred for the first time. Now comes 7. 7 is not already uh, 6 minus 7, it is not there in the hash map. So, we can just simply add it to our hash map without manipulating the count variable. Okay, now comes the another last one. Now, 6 minus 1 is 5 and we can see that 5 is already there in the hash map. So, since it is already there, we have to now increment the count values. Count initially is 1 and the value of the element is 1. So, 1 plus 1 is 2. So, now our count is going to change to 2 and, and this way we can derive the count will be 2, 2 pairs. Now, I just want to add one more thing over here is, what does this line signify? I just want to break it down a bit more. What does this line signify? It says that first of all, take the original count, whatever is already contained. So, this first part that we are seeing is nothing but the already existing pair count. How many pairs have I already got? So, that is why we are doing count equal to count plus. The second part is actually saying that if I have already found a match or if I have already found my corresponding element of the pair, please add please add that value also. So, we are going to explore this a bit more in this example. How is this working and why are we saying to add the count of the, uh, the value of the element also and not just simply incrementing the count. So, we are going to see that in this second example. So, let us say we, we have these numbers 1, 1, 1. Okay. Initially, my count will be 0 again. Now, what I am doing? Same thing 1, is the element and since it is not there in the hash map at first I am going to add it to hash map and I am going to have the value will be equal to 1 ok. When the second one comes what it signifies this 1 and 1 the first one and the second one is forming a pair because it is forming a pair that is why my count becomes 1. So, count equal to 1 is nothing but I have got one pair and to do that we are doing this computation count was initially 0 value of this 1 is 1 so 1 plus 0 is 1. Now the second one is done. Okay, so this one and one is done. Now I am at the third one. Okay, uh, one more thing I missed is uh, before even doing that, whenever we are encountering a new element, we are also updating the hash map. So this one is now becoming two. Now comes the fun part. When we are having, when we have already reached the third one, in this, what is what we have to do is okay, this condition is coming out to be true. Some minus error is coming out to be true because one is already existing. Okay. Now, what we are doing is count equal to count plus this. So, initially our count is 1. So, with this one, we are adding B of element means whatever the element's value is which is 2. Now, why we are doing this? This, the question can arise why we are doing this? Because firstly, this one, whatever we had, this is the original count. Means we had already gotten a pair. What was our pair? Our pair was 1 and 1. Now, what is this 2 signify? When we are saying hash map, uh, contains a value 2 against this key as 1, what does this signify? This signifies that any element whatever we have arrived at, this element has the liberty to pair up with two instances of 1. Means this third one can pair up with this one also and it can pair up with this one also. Because it has the liberty to pair up with two instances of 1, that is why my pairs, number of pairs that can happen with this third one is 2. So, I can form two pairs with the third one and originally I have already formed a pair between 1 and 1. So, 2 plus 1 will now become 3. Okay. And I will also update now the count of 1 to 3 because I have already reached the third element, the third one. Now, the final part. We have reached the 
final the last one and in this we are saying okay sum is sum minus arr1 uh, arr of i is already there fine now we will increment our count equal to 3 plus the value now in this case the value is 3 3 plus 3 what does this mean the final value uh, or i can say the the last element the one this has the liberty to pair up with three instances of one because it has the liberty to pair up with three instances of one means it can form three independent pairs. It can form three independent pairs and initially I have already formed three pairs with my initial set of ones. So, 3 plus 3 is now equal to 6. So, always remember this count plus B of element what we are doing this computation. This is signifying two things. One, we are adding the existing pair count which is denoted by this. And this, the second part, B of element, this is denoting how many pairs, how many uh, eligible pairs I have the liberty to pair with. I mean, to say that how many elements I can pair with. Who is I? The current element. The current element can pair up with how many instances of that element is being denoted by this second. So, that is the whole idea behind doing this computation and hence arriving at the required number of pairs. I hope the approach is clear to you. If not, please do let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any suggestions or any doubts. I have tried to break this down in as simple way as I could. Um, I don't think it has been broken down in such a way in any other place like I have done. So anyway, um, that was all about the dry run on the approach. Now let's see how do we code for this. Okay, so starting with the code changes, first let me declare this variable count. This is what we are going to return. Then I need to have a map. Map of integer and integers. And we'll have a for loop to traverse through this array. I less than n, I plus plus. First of all, we have to compute the target. What is going to be our target? Our target is going to be sum minus ARR of i. Okay, this is going to be the target, or I can take the absolute of this map dot absolute. Uh, sometimes, if the element is greater or the sum is greater, just to avoid that. Mm, yeah, so this will be that. So, this is the target, and then we are going to check if this map is containing that or not, if my target is contained or not. If it does, then we have to increment the count as per our logic count plus map1.get. Map1.get is going to give us the value. Value of what? The corresponding target that we have found out. And after doing this, we have to simply add to our map the current element and the count of that element. So in this, we are going to uh, can consider the existing count also. So, we'll use a method called get or default. So, what it does is if it is the first time we are trying to put anything to the map, it is going to set the default value as 0. If it is not, then it is going to increment it by 1. Okay. So, get or default, we will pass in for against what we are trying to get. It will give it to 0 if it is not existing. Otherwise, it is going to increment by 1. So this is something which is happening irrespective of my if condition. That's why I put it outside. And the count is anyway going to keep on increasing as and when we are finding a match. So end of the loop and we have to return the count. Yeah, that is uh, pretty much about this. So let's try to compile and run this. Sorry, my bad. Sum is not there, so variable is k. Okay. Um, the output is three. Um, expected output is two. Let's start with the dry run. When it is one, then six minus one, five. Not there. One is entered. Five. When five is entered, one is found. So this is uh, okay. When 7 is entered, target becomes 6 minus 7 minus 1. Okay, yeah. 
Okay, I get it. Uh, the problem is being caused by this math dot absolute. The thing is, when we are reaching this third element, seven uh, minus six is giving us minus one, and it is trying to do an absolute of that, and that is giving us a wrong value. So we can just remove this. Okay, then we'll submit. Okay, so our test cases have passed. Uh, yeah, that's all about this question. Um, do let me know again in the comments if you have any doubts. And please hit the like button so that uh, this can reach out to other people also. And if it does, it just gives me enough motivation to bring more such content. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to get further notifications. Thank you so much for watching.